In-depth sports coverage from The Athletic is now just £1 a month with an introductionary offer. See the link in the description to sign up. For the third window in a row, Manchester United were active on transfer deadline day. But the signing attracting the biggest headlines, however, is the one that they didn't sign. Jadon Sancho. After 10 weeks opportunity for talks, Sancho remains a Borussia Dortmund player and United never got close to signing him. At the beginning of the summer, Hans Joachim Watzke, Dortmund's chief executive, is said to have personally phoned Manchester United and explained how much the deal would cost and when it would need to be done by. United didn't believe that position would hold, either the 120 million euro fee or the August 10th deadline, and so effectively sat still in the hope that Dortmund would blink first and place the call that they were ready to do business. Intermediaries attempted to broker a deal, but were waiting on United to move, which didn't happen. When Dortmund's sporting director, Michael Sork, stood at the side of their training pitches on August 10th, the final day of pre-season, and said the decision on Sancho staying was final, one alarmed United director made a call to check whether the statement was genuine. The response was along the lines of, what did you expect? You knew the terms. United privately argue that the continued conversations after that point, conducted via intermediaries Emako Obasi and Marco Lichsteiner, were evidence of Dortmund remaining open to a sale. But the reason for the involvement of agents is hotly disputed. United insist Dortmund wanted talks done through Obasi and Lichsteiner, and some believe this was so Dortmund could stick to their public stance while having a back channel to a potential resolution. United held lengthy discussions and made known what they were willing to pay, which held a firm limit given the current economic environment. They argued that the 120 million euro price tag did not take into account the financial hit caused by the pandemic. Executives genuinely felt that it should come down, given that the total of the transfer was potentially enormous. An estimated 250 million euros, including wages and agent fees. United made what has been described as a calm decision to refuse that amount and felt vindicated when the government postponed the return of fans to stadiums. But it's understood that Dortmund originally planned for the 120 million euros to be a minimum. In any case, United never got near. One offer, submitted by Chief Negotiator Matt Judge through the agents in the final week of September, amounted to £80 million pounds plus add-ons. There was a sense at the Westfalen Stadion that United did not take Dortmund's demand seriously or were acting without full intentions to actually complete the signing. And Sancho himself is believed to have felt undervalued by the offers, and even if United had placed the right bid late on, it's understood he would have questioned why it did not come earlier. There had actually been dialogue with Sancho's representatives dating back to when he left Manchester City for Dortmund in 2017, but talks commenced in earnest this year once United had secured Champions League football on July the 26th. Solskjaer had determined Sancho would be his main target, but that conviction was not found in the pursuit, with Dortmund soon frustrated at United's reluctance to commit to a fee or structure. There were allegations of freestyling, a refusal to provide a top line, and when pushed for answers, Judge suggested the issues lay with the owners. There were accusations of a split in opinion between Ed Woodward and Joel Glazer over the price, with Woodward advocating a higher fee, but United insists that board members were united on their view that €120 million Euros was too much in the post-COVID-19 climate. Privately, United suggested the 120 million euro figure could be reached, including some unrealistic bonuses, which may have allowed Dortmund to save face with a headline figure. Dortmund were resolute in their stance, though, and believed that a higher price could be achieved next summer. And the cause for that confidence was revealed when Sork announced a previously unknown extension to Sancho's contract, meaning it did not run out until 2023. Now, United insist they knew all those details and were for a long time frustrated by what they perceived to be the slow process of dealing with Dortmund through Abassi, Sancho's agent, and Lichsteiner, the brother of former Arsenal player Stefan. Conversely, United have faced claims of communication issues and lengthy delays from various sources. There were also difficulties over wages and agents' fees. It has been suggested to The Athletic that the opening contract offer to Sancho was actually slightly lower than his Dortmund salary. As is customary in Germany, Sancho's contract was heavily incentivized. Conscious of maintaining a certain wage structure, United's initial proposal was actually less than Sancho's total pay packet at Dortmund. A second offer, made in early August, is said to have achieved parity with his Dortmund deal, 
with the potential for a fractional increase based on performance. And this was not accepted, with the terms desired thought to be in the region of Paul Pogba's £250,000 a week. Now, there eventually was a breakthrough on Sancho's salary in the second week of September. Running parallel were negotiations over agent fees. Some have suggested an initial proposal for a payment to the agents put United on the back foot. After negotiations, a lower sum was agreed, but that still left the transfer fee and, as the gap remained, other options were considered. Some agents who've worked with United on other deals believe the club should have halted talks on Sancho much earlier if €120 million Euros was seen as too much and pursued alternatives. There were also accusations that the delay speaks to a fundamental issue in recruitment, which sources call a paralysis of decision-making. But given how much Solskjaer wanted Sancho, United wanted to try for their number one target for as long as possible. Sancho will of course stay in the crosshairs for the next time trading opens. It's understood he has long since shifted his focus to a future transfer rather than moving in the current window, but it is anticipated that more clubs will be in the reckoning for his signature by then. The Athletic is in-depth sports coverage that helps fans see the game from every angle. And Tifo is delighted to be able to offer full access to The Athletic now for just £1 per month. See the link in the description for details of this introductory offer. For football fans, that's access to the writing of journalists dedicated to your team, plus David Ornstein, Phil Hay, Daniel Taylor and many more. Not to mention over 400 full-time writers offering inside access and independent analysis of every team that you follow across every league that you care about. Get local expertise and unmatched league-wide perspective. The Athletics writers are in the bubble, on the field and behind the scenes as it all happens. Catch up, go deep and join the conversation on the most important happenings in sports.